When 3D printing, there's so much you can change, tweak, and do. It's really hard to know where to start. So here are seven things I wish I knew earlier in my 3D printing journey. These tips help you save prints, get better results, or just make the whole process easier. So make sure to consider them before starting your next print. Let's jump right in. Number one is good bed adhesion is everything. If you have poor print bed adhesion, that means a failed print because it's gonna come off and it's all gonna end in spaghetti, a lot of time lost and frustration. So the most basic and easiest thing is to keep your print bed clean. That first of all means try not touching it with your kind of greasy fingers because that's gonna become a problem. And if ever your print plate gets dirty, then you should clean that. You can either clean it with isopropyl alcohol or with, you know, just some dish soap and under hot water. Just make sure to rinse it off properly and then also dry it. The next thing is choosing the right print surface. So you can usually either go for the textured print plate or for a smooth one. Also, there's other stuff like glass, carbon fiber and others. But generally, just make sure that you're getting the right one because depending on the print plate, it either won't stick well enough or it's gonna stick too well and you're never gonna get the print off. So it's definitely nice to check something like the Prusa material database that's gonna tell you how to print this best and if you need something like a glue or a glue stick. And that actually is the next thing. If you're having problems with your print either not sticking enough or sticking too much, then a glue stick, liquid glue, or also something like hairspray or 3D lac is gonna be a big problem solver. I really like this because especially on big, large and flat prints, it's really helped my success rate go way up and also you're pretty much not having any warping at all with this. So it's a really nice thing, you don't need it with all prints, but it's definitely worth knowing about this. The second thing is filament storage and care. Filament that's absorbed too much moisture can lead to bad results, stringing or even failed prints. All in all, your print quality is definitely gonna suffer from this. My big tip here is know when to pay attention to this. PLA, for example, isn't that susceptible to absorbing moisture, so just putting it in a dry bag is usually gonna be fine even long term. I'm in Bali right now and my PLA has been sitting around with no problems for a while now and the humidity here is through the roof. So PLA, you know, if you're definitely storing it long term, then it does make sense to put it in a bag, but there's other filaments that you have to worry way more about. Other stuff like TPU, PTG or nylon especially are super hygroscopic, means they love water and they draw it in like crazy. So that means when you're not using those types of filaments, you should always have them in a sealed bag. Ideally, you're gonna put some silica gel that's gonna absorb the moisture inside and also use a vacuum pump to take all the air out. Under these conditions, you can really store these for a long time, so no problem. The other thing is while something like PLA is also fine just sitting mounted on a printer for a little while longer, some other filaments won't be. So while for example DAMS Lite from Bamboo is really nice for PLA because you know it's fine, it's cheaper and it's working perfectly but it doesn't have that seal quality. Whereas the full size or normal AMS really can close everything down and you're not getting any moisture in. And if you add some silica gel in there then you really have this down to a super nice humidity and even your more problematic filaments can stay in there for pretty long. There's some filaments though that are super susceptible and easy to ruin and those you should really print from a filament dryer or a dry box. This is really nice because it really is dried the whole time and it just goes directly into the printer also already at a good temperature which can help print quality. If ever any of your filaments get too wet and you can't print them without huge quality issues anymore or not at all then a filament dryer is really what you want. All of the filaments need different settings, but usually you can just throw them in the filament dryer overnight, I would say, and then dry out most of the moisture, making them printable again. So then you won't have to throw out the whole roll of filament. Just a quick mention, links to all of the stuff that I'm talking about will be in the description down below. The third tip is that part orientation on your print bed matters so much. I know these days a lot of models already come pre-sliced so you don't really have to think about it, but with other models or some sides you have to still do everything yourself. And it's obviously something that everybody should know and it's not a big thing. But when you're printing something you should really think about the print orientation. And there are several factors that you want to think about. The first one is aligning parts to minimize overhangs. For example, this drawer here, if you put it on the side, you need a lot of supports, which is gonna affect the print quality and also gonna take a long time printing all of those supports. However, if you put it on the other side, then it prints perfectly all the way up without any support at all, which is definitely way nicer. 
The second thing that a part is usually way stronger in one direction because of the layer lines. So if you see all the layer lines stacked above each other, then those can be pulled apart from each other fairly easy, or at least way easier than in the other direction, because this is where you have the full length plastic. So if you have parts where strength really matters, it does make sense to think about how are they gonna be used, how is pressure gonna come onto those parts, and then orient them in a whale wire printing that's gonna support that load the best. One thing that's more of a side fact is that printing in the Z direction, so upwards, is usually slower than, than printing in the X, Y axis, which is just left and right, basically. This is because of kinematics, I'm not gonna go into it too much, but in general, you know, if you can lay something flat, it'll usually print faster than if you're printing it all the way up, right? My next tip, and I don't know if this is a little bit controversial, is that tree supports should really be the standard kind of supports. I mostly prefer tree supports. They are way easier to remove and also they take less filament. So while the other kind is actually called standard supports, I really don't use them that often. If you have really flat surfaces, then standard supports can be better and can support a little bit better. But honestly, in most cases, I like tree supports way better. So depending on what you're printing, definitely give tree supports a try. I don't really have a full on guide where they make more sense than standard. And after a while, you kind of get the hang where it works. For me personally, I use them most of the time. So I would try tree supports first. And then if you see some problems that you can still go to standard, but definitely do check it out like that. Tip number five is get some different 3D printer nozzles. While depending on your printer, changing the nozzles can be a real pain in the ass, it can really make a difference. The nice thing is, for example, with the A1 series that I have here, it's really easy to change the nozzle and it's done in a couple seconds. For example, on the other side, on the X1C series, or in my old Creality machines, it's a lot more work to change a nozzle. So you really have to think about, does it make sense to change nozzles depending on your printer? If it's easy to do, or depending on the use case, you really should do it, then this is a great tip. In general, these days, I try to buy all my nozzles in the hardened version because it gives you the ability to print carbon fiber and stuff like this, and it's always good to have that option. Also, there's even the diamond back nozzles that have real industrial kind diamonds, which I would really love to try. So if anybody knows someone, please reach out to me. I'd love to test those because the concept is just kind of amazing to me. But coming back to the nozzle sizes, 0.4 is obviously the standard nozzle, and I think it's a really good middle ground that can do pretty much everything. But if you want to print something really intricate, then going for the 0.2 millimeter nozzle is definitely worth it. This can really help you get a lot finer details and also thinner layer lines, so this will in general make the quality a lot better and more precise. The annoying thing about printing with a small nozzle is that it makes your prints a lot slower. The opposite, of course, is true for 0.6 or 0.8 millimeter nozzles, which will push a lot more filament in a quick time. So this means you're getting way quicker prints, but also a lot less detail. So this might be really nice for your big chunky prints, maybe if you're printing Gridfinity stuff or anything like that, where you just really want that thing to go fast and be done quickly. Also, one thing that I really like is if you go on 0.8 millimeter or even one millimeter nozzle, then it gets really interesting because you can make really thick layer lines and really show the kind of 3D print that you're making. This is a whole different design and look that you're achieving with this, and I think it can look pretty cool. My next point is that standard slicer settings often aren't ideal. I gotta say though to everyone that kind of dialed those in, it's really impressive because they really work for most of the stuff out there. It's really good just to be able to throw something in a slicer, then just press slice and something printable will come out. So huge shout out for that and I love it. But of course, putting some work in yourself and kind of understanding which settings to play with can yield huge benefits. With easy tweaks that you can do in a couple seconds, you can get better print quality, use less filament, and also save a lot of time during prints. So all of this can really be worth it. One thing that I always say is there's really nitty gritty stuff in terms of slicer settings that you can really dive into deeply. And there's a place for that, but honestly it depends on either how long is your print gonna be or how often are you gonna print that. So if you print it really long or really often, then it makes sense to really optimize it to the max. I personally don't do that, and if you wanna look into the really advanced tutorials, then you should check out Factorian Design's videos. He makes really cool stuff on that, which just is like a whole different level on, well, also like meticulousness, but also time spent that you're spending optimizing that print. 
For me, a lot of the time, I'm just printing stuff one off and I don't need to optimize it to the most because I would spend too much time optimizing it as opposed to time that I'm actually saving. Or as you know, obviously putting in my time personally is a little bit more worth for me than the printer printing half an hour longer. So for me, the big things that I usually adjust are infill pattern and infill percentage. If you don't need something to be structurally sound just to like kind of be okay, then lightning is a really good pattern because it saves a lot of filament. Also, you can definitely dial it back from whatever the 15% that it's usually to 10% and you'll still be perfectly fine. Other stuff that can really help is wall count because an extra layer of wall count might actually make your print more durable than putting more infill in. So you know, you gotta kinda see where the trade-off is in between those. If you really wanna get fancy with it, you can do specific modifiers for different parts of the print, but this is, as I said, where you get into the nitty gritty of things. I also made a full video about this kind of stuff that gives you more the general overview on how to really make your print faster and easier in as little time as possible. So if you're interested in that, check it out. I'll have it linked somewhere up here. And the last point, and this is a really important one, is you should worry about air quality when 3D printing. You know 3D printing is still melting plastic, which isn't really good for the air quality and therefore it's not good for you if you're in the room. How bad it gets really depends on the filament. PLA is fairly okay. It's still definitely not great, but there's other ones that are way worse. Especially filaments like ABS really emit a lot of nasty stuff into the air and you really don't want to be around there for that. You can smell it if you print it and you're in the room and it's honestly not good. So maybe if you're printing stuff like that, you shouldn't be in the room or, you know, make sure that you have really good ventilation. I'm actually thinking about making a whole video, trying out different ways to minimize air pollution from 3D printing, especially because in my office, I have my 3D printers right next to my desk and that's not a good combo long time. So if you're interested in that, leave me a comment down below, letting me know. And yeah, I'm gonna get to work on that. One last thing about that topic that I want to leave you with is watch this video by Thomas and Landra, which is really good. He really shows what kind of, you know, stuff you're getting yourself into with air quality and 3D printing. And to me, it was pretty eye opening. So that's it for my favorite 3D printing tips that I wish I had known earlier. Let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite or what you think is missing from this list. There's definitely so many more good tips I kind of had to narrow down, but I'm really looking forward to your opinion and what you think is missing. In general, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like. And if you're buying any 3D printing stuff like a new printer or filament, please consider using my affiliate links. It really helps me out and it just gives me the ability to make more videos for you guys out there. And if now you're not done watching cool 3D printing videos, then you should definitely check out my other video that I made on the best 3D printing tools. This is stuff that has really helped me make my workflow better, easier, and just nicer in general. So check it out, I'll link the video here, and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye.